good day grade tens welcome to this next lesson in extra maths in this lesson we're going to continue with our revision in preparation for your final exams right so let's get stuck in um basically what we're doing now is looking at which expression best represents a shaded area of the following venn diagrams do you agree that the shaded area is only the intersection between A and B? It's not everything in A and B, it's only the intersection. So this is going to be A intersection B. And yeah, the shaded area is everything that does not include A. So we'd say it is A complement or A not A. Right. State which of the following set of events is a mutually exclusive. Now, a mutually exclusive event is one where they can happen independently. In other words, um, the learners in grade 10 in the swimming team and the learners in grade 10 in the debating team. Do you agree that in A, a learner in grade 10 can be in the swimming team and the debating team? So that is not mutually exclusive. They can't just be in the swimming team or the debating team. They can be in both. Okay, so that is not mutually exclusive. The learners in grade 8 and the learners in grade 12, they are mutually exclusive. The learners in grade 8 can't be in grade 12 or, in, or if they're in grade 12, they can't be in grade 8 because that's how we tell them apart. So that is definitely mutually exclusive. The learners who take mathematics in grade 10 and the learners who take physical sciences in grade 10, is it mutually exclusive that they take mathematics and physical sciences? In other words, um, if they take maths, it means they can't do physical sciences or vice versa. And that obviously is not mutually exclusive because you know for a fact that if you do physical science, you have to do maths. So that is not mutually exclusive. Right, now it says, in a class of 40 learners, the following information is true. Seven learners are left-handed. 18 learners play soccer. Four learners play soccer and are left-handed. All 40 learners are either right-handed or left-handed. Okay, so it says let L be the set of left-handed people and S be the set of all the people who played soccer. So if we had to draw this, do you agree we've got a universal set? And how many people are in our universal set? Do you agree there are 40 people that are in our universal set? Because either they're left-handed or they're right-handed, okay? So therefore, there are 40 in the universal set. We've got an L, which are the people that are left-handed. And we've got an S, and those are the people that play soccer. Now they've told us seven learners are left-handed, okay? That means that there are 33 that are right-handed. But we don't know about whether they play soccer or not. So the whole of the circle, the whole of the circle has to include seven, okay? The whole of this circle has to be eight. It's 18. Do you agree the whole of that circle? Four learners play soccer and are left-handed. So do you agree that that is four? That intersection is four. Four of them play soccer and are left-handed. Therefore, how many are left in this circle? Do you agree we've got a total of seven learners that are left-handed, right? Seven learners. Therefore, if four of them play soccer and are left-handed, we have three that are left-handed that do not play soccer. Similarly, we've got 18 players, learners that play soccer, but four of them have to be left-handed, the rest are going to be right-handed, and that makes 14. Now it says, how many learners in the class are right-handed and do not play soccer? And do not play soccer. So that would be everybody that's left, do you agree? Everybody that's right-handed and does not play soccer will be outside of these two circles. So we need to take these and add them up and subtract them from 40, and that will tell us exactly what the situation is. Okay, so we've drawn the Venn diagram. Always, I would always draw the Venn diagram, even if they don't ask me to, just so that it helps me, okay? So now let's have a look at it. Three plus four plus 14 is going to be 18, that's 21. That means that there are 19 people, there are 19 learners that are outside, that do not, that are right-handed and do not play soccer. 
Now it says determine the probability that a learner is left-handed or plays soccer. Okay, so left-handed or is the same as adding. Okay. Okay. So in other words, they're either left-handed or they play soccer. So it's going to be all of this, which is 21 out of 40. So the probability that someone is left-handed or plays soccer is 21 out of 40. The probability that they're right-handed and play soccer is only this bit here. It's only this bit here. Okay. So therefore, that is going to be 14 out of 40, which is the same as 7 out of 20. There you go. So you can see that you can quite easily, if you can quite easily draw your Venn diagram, then all the rest of the questions are very easy to solve. So you just have to practice drawing your Venn diagrams. Right, let's get back to paper one. So that, this basically is a continuation now of a paper one um, exam paper. Uh, we're doing question six. It says f of x equals 3 over x plus 1 and g of x equals minus 2x minus 4. Um, it says sketch the graphs of f and g on the same set of axes. Okay, so obviously I don't have the facility of a ruler on this software. So I would really like to urge you guys to use a ruler and draw a beautiful graph. So this would be the x-axis and this would be the y-axis. Let's start with the g of x equals minus 2x minus 4. That is going through the y value of minus 4. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's negative 4. It is a negative graph, which means it slopes up to the left. And if we want to find a way it cuts the x-axis, we're going to let um, y equal naught. So we've got naught is equal to minus 2x minus 4. So therefore 4 is equal to minus 2x. Therefore x is equal to negative 2. So that would be 1, 2. So, oh, sorry. Let's try again. Let's see if I can't draw a better straight line. Hmm. Okay, and you guys are obviously going to be using your rulers and your erasers and your pencils, and you shouldn't have such a squiggly line as I've drawn there. So this there is g of x. Okay, now we want to draw 3 of, 3 of x plus 1. So what type of graph is that? First of all, do you agree it's got an asymptote at plus 1? So it's got an asymptote at x plus 1. Okay, the best way to solve for f of x is actually to substitute values in. So we're going to go x and we're going to go y and we're going to go minus 3 minus 1, 0, 1, 3. And now what we're going to do is find the appropriate y value. So we're going to substitute into here. So we go 3 over minus 3 plus 1. Now obviously you guys don't have to write every single one of these down. I really suggest you write a table down there um, to help you work out what this graph looks like. It's going to be much easier for you than to try and split random points. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Um, if x is minus 3, then we've got 3 divided by minus 3, which is minus 1, plus 1, which is 0. So that is 0. When x is minus 1, we've got minus 3 plus 1, which is minus 2. When x is 0, this thing is undefined, and you just have the 1. So that is your asymptote, okay? If x is 1, y is going to be 4. And if x is 3, y is 2. Okay, so when x is minus 3, so it's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, y is 0. When x is minus 1, minus 1, y is minus 2. So do you agree this graph does something like that? 
I'm not 100% sure where it touches or crosses. And um, please don't do what I just did. Remember that I don't have the facility of, oh goodness gracious me. Okay, let's try again. It goes through two and minus four. I don't have the facility of an erase and ruler on my software. So therefore my drawings are going to be a little bit rough, okay? Whereas yours aren't, okay? And then it goes up here when X is one, Y is four. And when X is three, Y is two. There you go. And this would be F of X. Right, done. Now it says write down the equations of the asymptotes of F. Well, do you agree that the first asymptote we have, which is pretty obvious, is that Y equals one. So we've got Y is equal to one. We also have the Y axis, which is X is equal to zero. Next it says determine the domain of F. Now F here is the hyperbola which is this graph here. And it's asking you for the domain of F. So basically what it's saying is for which phase of X does this graph actually obey the rules, okay? I mean, does this graph actually exist? And do you agree this graph exists for every X value except where the asymptote occurs, which is in the Y axis? So the domain would be X is an element of real numbers for x does not equal zero. Okay, the x does not equal zero at all. Now it says solve for x if f of x equals g of x. They want to know where these touch. Okay, so now we'll see how incorrect my drawing is, whether or not it's supposed to be two crosses or just a touch, or what the story is. So let's have a look. In order to do this, we're going to let these two graphs be equal. So we're going to go three over x plus one, is equal to minus 2x minus 4. If we take it across, we've got 3 over x plus 2x is equal to negative 5. Let's multiply everything by x to get rid of the denominator. So we've got 3 plus 2x squared is equal to minus 5x. And now we can rearrange it into a beautiful trinomial. So we've got 2x squared plus 5x minus 3, plus 3, sorry, equals 0. So if we factorize that, we've got 2 and 1 and 1 and 3. But do you notice that that's a plus and that's a plus? So we're going to do 3 and 1. That gives you plus 2 plus 3, which gives us 5. So that's 2x plus 3, x plus 1. Therefore, x is going to equal negative 3 over 2, and x is equal to negative 1. So in fact, my graph should look like this. It's going to cross at x equals minus 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half, and x equals negative 1. So it should look like that more or less but better hey okay so now we've got the x values and it says so for x so for x is equal to negative one and for x is equal to negative three over two right so now it says determine the values of x for which g of x is smaller than three and greater than or equal to minus one Okay, hang on a minute, let me just. So it says determine the values for which g of x. Okay, so what are they saying? g of x is minus 2 of x minus 4. And they want to know for which values of x this whole thing will be smaller than 3 or greater than negative 1, greater than or equal to. Okay, so they don't tell you should use a graph or determine this algebraically. So I'm actually going to determine it algebraically. I'm going to say fine. That means we've got this formula. 2x minus 4 is smaller than 3 and greater than or equal to minus 1. Now remember what we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side. So 
If we add 4 into the middle, we have to add 4 into the right hand side and add 4 into the left hand side. So we've got minus 1 plus 4 is smaller than or equal to 2x, is smaller than 3 plus 4. So we've got minus, no, it's plus 3 is smaller than or equal to 2x, is smaller than 7. Therefore, x is going to be smaller than 3.5 and greater than or equal to one and a half. There we go. Okay, interesting here. So they say for which phase of x is g of x, this curvy graph between minus one and three. Then it says determine the y-intercept of k if k of x is two times g of x. So k of x equals two times g of x. 2g of x. Um, okay, but g of x, I did it again, g of x happens to be equal to this, so it becomes 2 times our negative 2x, negative 4, which we multiply by 2 gives you minus 4x plus, no, minus 8, and they want to know the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is just going to be x is 0, y is minus 8. Now it says write down the coordinates and of the x and y-intercepts of h if x h is the graph of g reflected about the y-axis. h is the graph of g if reflected above the y-axis. So instead of it being a straight line coming from the left going down to the right, it is now a right-hand line, okay? And it says, write down the coordinates of the x and y intercepts of h if the graph g is reflected in the y-axis. Okay, so do we agree, by the way, that this is minus 2 and this is negative 4? We've got that. If we flip x and y, do you agree that... In other words, we're asking for reflecting it. So reflecting it is making the positive x value the negative x value and the y stays the same. So we're going to go h of x is equal to minus 2 minus x minus 4. 2 times minus x minus times of minus 2 is going to be 2x minus 4. So if I had to, oopsie, if I had to draw this graph, it would be x goes through minus 4, still minus 4, but what does this be? It's going to be a positive. So it says, what are the x and y intercepts? Well, y intercepts are going to be the same. It's going to be negative 4, 0. Wrong. The y intercept is going to be minus 0, minus 4. Um, sorry, because remember that this is on the y-axis and there are four units down, so that is zero, negative four. And across, instead of going through negative two x, they're going through positive two x. So x is going to two, zero. Hmm, nice question here. Right, let's move on. Okay, so now we've got a parabola. And the parabola says the graph of f of x is equal to ax squared plus q sketched below. So since there's no middle term, what do we know? We know that it's symmetrical about the x-axis and there's only one y value, right? The y cut. It tells you that points A are 2 naught and points B are minus 3, 2, 5 lie on the graph. Points A and C are intercepts of the graph. Graph. Now it says write down the coordinates of C. Okay, so from this equation, x squared plus q, it is probably obvious that there is no shift on this to the left or right. It is symmetrical about the y-axis. So because of that, if a is 2 naught, c is going to be minus 2 naught. This is minus 2 naught. Okay, now it says determine the equation for f. Okay, we can do that. We know that f of x is equal to ax squared plus q, right? 
we can substitute in one of these points, so substituting z to zero. So zero is equal to two squared a plus q. So therefore four a plus q is equal to zero. So do you agree that q is equal to four a? Right, that's equation one. Now let's do it again. We've got f of x is equal to, and we're going to use these points here. So it becomes minus 3 squared times by 2 plus q, and that f of x is supposed to be the y, which is 2 and a half. So we're going to raise this point, and we're going to make it 2 and a half, which is 5 over 2. Right. So minus 3 squared is 9 times by 2 is 18. So it's 18 plus Q is equal to 5 over 2. So now we subtract it. So we get 5 over 2 minus 18 is equal to Q. So that's 1, 2 and a half minus 18 is going to be minus 15 and 3 and a, minus 15 and a half equals Q. Okay, so therefore we know um, that the equation for the F is Y is equal to 4A minus 15 and a half. Right, now they want the range of F. Now remember range is interesting because range goes along the y-axis, okay? That's the way I tend to remember it, is that range, range has got like a little line down, okay? It's got a tail and so has the y-axis, okay? It's got a very dominant tail. Right, so what are we trying to find? We're finding the where it, where it runs from the bottom of the F to the top. Okay, so do you agree anything below this point here? This graph doesn't exist. Okay, it doesn't exist. Therefore, we can say that it is going to be the range of this is going to be y has got to be greater than negative 2. Okay, and we also have that y is an element of infinity, an element of real values. Or you could say that y is an element of real values, y has got to be greater, no, got to be greater than um, minus 2. There you go. Now it says write down the range of h. Wait a minute, let me just erase some stuff. Okay, what is the range of h? if where h of x is minus f of x minus 2. Okay, sometimes it's just easiest to substitute the values in and see what they do. So, and then we'll talk about how we do that. So we've got h of x is equal to minus f of x minus 2. f of x is ax squared plus q, but we worked it out to be um, 4x squared and then minus plus q ended up being minus 15 and a half, and that's h of x, right? No, that's f of x. Now we want h of x. h of x is minus 4x squared minus 15 and a half minus 2, which gives you minus 4x squared plus 15 and a half, and then the minus 2, minus 2, which becomes minus 4x squared, minus 13 and a half. Huh, excellent, excellent, excellent. So now the new range would be from minus 13 and a half is going to be greater than, okay, wait, let's try again. Oh, okay, never mind. This would be that y is going to be greater than minus 13 and a half. Y does, is an element of real values, right? 
Now it says determine the equation of the exponential function g is equal to b to the x plus q, where the range is y is going to be greater than, just greater than, um, <laughs> y has got to be greater than, y is going to be greater than 4, minus 4, okay, which passes through the point A. Okay, so we want an exponential graph. G of x is equal to b of x plus q, but we worked out q to be minus 15, am I right? So therefore, passes through the equation of the next exponential function, g of x equals b of x plus q with range y equals minus 4. Range is that y is greater than negative 4, okay? which passes through the point A. Right, so now we want an exponential function, okay, and we're saying that it has to have a range of y is greater than negative 4. Therefore, Q okay, and it passes through the point A. So let's, let's do that first. Let's go y is equal to b to the x plus q. So if the y value is 0, the x value is 2. So we've got 0 is equal to b to the 2 plus q. Right, so therefore we can say that minus q is equal to b to the 2. Good start, okay? Then we also want, what do we want? We need that... Okay, g of x equal to b of x plus q, q is equal to minus q is equal to b over 2. So we've done that, right. We also know the range is greater than negative 4. Which means that q has got to be something to do with minus 4. It's going to be bigger than, which means it's going to be greater than. Okay, and we know that minus minus 4 is equal to b squared, therefore 4 is equal to b squared, so therefore b is equal to 2, and it says determine the equation of the exponential function with range minus 4 and passes through the point A. Okay, so remember this is point A, um, oh, yes, and it passes through point A, and has a range of 4, greater than minus 4. So therefore we can say, um, the range is going to be greater than negative 4, so therefore we can say that y is greater than negative 4. Um, which means the equation is, um, g of x is equal to b squared, and there's your q, is that the range has to be greater than negative 4, so it has to be, in fact, plus or minus 4. Okay, there you go. Oh, we haven't done b squared. What is b? So now we need to just work out what b is. Um, in fact, no, that's b to the x, and we now need to find out what squared would be. Um, they're telling you that it is the power of 2. So g of x is equal to 2 to the x negative 4. There you go. Hmm, nice question. Right, now let's do some data handling. Okay, it says a baker keeps a record of the number of scones that he sells every day. The data for 19 days is shown below. Determine the mean of the given data. Okay, so first it's all, let's check if it is in numerical order. No, it is not, that's very mean. Um, you will notice that they don't ask you to um, do anything bigger than that, other than the mean. So you can just put it in your calculator. In fact, we're going to do that. And we are going to 
add it up and divide by the number 19. Okay, so let us do that. In fact, we're not, we're not, we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is change this to stats and then we're going to choose one variable and we're going to put these numbers in. So it's going to be 31 equals um, 36 equals 62 equals 74 equals 65 equals hang on I was going to find equals equals no it doesn't like that at all um equals then we've got 63 equals and then we've got 60 equals and then we've got 34 equals we've got 46 oh, it's slow equals we have 56 equals we have got 37 Nope, not 33, 37 equals 46 equals um, 40 equals 52 equals 48 equals 39 equals uh, 43 equals 31 equals and the last one 66 equals right now we press AC and then we go to shift stat and we press 4 and there you can see N is the number of elements, X, the dash of it is the average, is the mean, that's what we want, which is two. And there we go, we click it and it's 48.89. And we're gonna round off to one decimal, so it becomes 48.9, 48.9. So that is 48,9. Now it says rearrange the data in ascending order and determine the median. Okay, so let's do it. So do you agree the smallest number here is definitely in the 30s? So we're going to choose 31. So that's 31. And there's another 31. 31. Then 36. I saw 34. Yeah, so that's 34. Then I saw a 36. And the 37. And then I chose a 40. But there's a 39. And then I chose 40. And then 43. Oh, that was close. 43. 
Um, 46. One of them, yes, the other one, 46. 48. Uh, 52. 56. Uh, 60. 62. 63, 65, 66, and 74. Right, so now we are told that they're 19 days. So do you agree if we do 19, if you're looking for 19, halfway from 19, if that's to 19, and that's one, is to add one and then divide by two, which will be 10. So the 10th number is gonna be middle. So if we count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 10 is 46, and 46 is the mean, the mean, actually the median. Now it says determine the lower and upper quartile more, um, um, quarter of the data, but the lower upper quarter of the data are really just the mean of these two. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's now going to be the fifth number. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So that's 37. And again, one, two, three, four, five, it's going to be 62. Okay, so the lower quartile, which is called Q1, is 37, and the upper quartile, which is called Q3, is 62. Okay, 62. Right, now it says draw a box and whisker diagram to represent the data. Now, okay, grade tens, I really need to urge you to remember to draw a line using your ruler. So you're going to draw a line using your ruler, and then using the ruler, you're going to mark off the values. We're going from 30 basically to 7580. So it's going to be um, 30 and then 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, I could have gone a bit bigger. Let's just go a bit bigger, shall we? Okay, so let's do this. We're going from 30 all the way through to 80. So it's 30 plus 10 is 40, 50, 60, 70, oh, 80, okay, so 80 ends there. Okay, so 80 ends there. Right, so that is 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80 and please remember to do your, use a ruler right now when you are doing this remember that you're marking off the points as you go through it okay but now do you agree that the smallest number is 31 so therefore i'm going to mark off i'm actually going to erase this stuff because i don't need it the biggest number is 74 and the smallest number is 31 the rest of the stuff i know already okay So let's mark this off, shall we? So the smallest number is 31. Okay, Q1 is 37. Um, the median is 48.9, more or less. And the upper quartile is 62. And finally, the top result was 74. And then we basically need to do this and then join that and join that and then join this. And remember, you're doing it with a ruler every time. Okay, so this will be the lower value. This is Q1, this is Q2, this is Q3, and this is the upper value or your upper limit. Okay, and from this you can see it's just slightly skewed to the right because we seem to have more data on the right hand side than the left hand side. Right, guys, um, we're going to stop there. We will carry on with doing this modal class and everything else in the next lesson, which will be on Wednesday. Have a great week. Cheers. Um,